Hi, I'm Karen Lacey. And I'm Melanie Dellis. And this is Muse Stories, where we uncover the unusual histories hidden all around us. Today, we are going to be talking about St. Patty's Day. Yes, we are. Oh, no, that's a good I don't know. That's <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, no. we are totally set to tell you all about the history and mysteries of St. Patrick's Day, right? Yes. We have some green beer Ooh. for the occasion. Top of the morning to you. <laughs> wait, we didn't wait. We have to drink. We can't just toast and not drink. Green beer. Actually, I have never had green beer before, so this is going to be gross. It tastes okay. the same as normal beer. Tastes like beer. Yeah. Yeah. So, if our teeth start turning green, it's Melanie's fault. <laughs> she put too much green dye in the beer. It's all part of the. It's all part of the program. Right. Right. So anyway, speaking of green beer, did you know? The fun facts all about the green beer, like why we dye this green. I know some of them, and I can assume others, but please, enlighten <laughs> me, Melanie. So it, um, I actually thought that it was because people put green dye in the beer. Oh, I actually do know this. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. But um, I will keep going. Please do. Okay. So it's not green dye, it's blue dye. And it started because Dr. Um, Dr. Curtin, who's a coroner's physician back in, oh God, where are my notes, 1914, I think, in New York, um, he actually put something called blue wash in the beer at the St. Patrick's Day party they were having at this club. And I think blue wash is like, a, like a, an iron powder. Mm-hmm. And it turns the beer green because it's yellow, and which makes total sense because if you remember preschool or kindergarten, blue and and yellow make green, right? But blue, yellow, <laughs> green. But here's me trying to make our green beer for this episode, and I've got the green food coloring, like an idiot. I'm going, why is this not turning green? <laughs> Although it did turn this really pretty color. Yeah. But well, it would have to look like a holiday just for that color. It was um like gangrene. It was more like gangrene. I thought it was like a <laughs> gangrene. That's awful. Why would you want anything to look the color of gangrene? No, I didn't want it to look like that. That's just what happened. I thought like gangrene was like black, not green. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, that's a whole nother episode. Okay. Right? Gangrene episodes, medical mysteries, the histories of medical mysteries. But uh, oh, there was uh, the Spokane Press back in, what was it, 1910, I think. It said, this is my favorite line about green beer, and then we can move on and talk about the other stuff. But um, it said, green beer, it tastes like beer, but it looks like paint. <laughs> what Doesn't that make you want to drink it? It makes me want to drink it. I'm going to try it. Hmm. Tastes like beer. Looks like paint. <laughs> you kind of lead up to that, didn't you? I did. Look at I have a leprechaun on my head dancing. <laughs> she does have a leprechaun. And one of the things that the leprechaun is holding and the one that's on my head is actually something that's um, definitely become um, very synonymous with St. Patty's Day. There's a couple different symbols that you'll see on different objects that are um, about the time periods between St. Patty's Day mm -hmm. and today, um, and they're all used in different ways. But I think today, really what's really happened with St. Patty's Day and all the objects surrounding that, the regalia, is that it celebrates Irish culture and mm -hmm. Irish heritage. Um, and it's really for, I would say, I mean, yes, it's celebrated in Ireland and it's gotten really, really big in Ireland. But in many ways, some of the bigger celebrations are actually outside of Ireland mm -hmm. celebrating the... Um, Irish diaspora and all of the people who immigrated from Ireland for one reason or another, the Irish potato famine, which that's a whole other thing we could talk about, or just trying to you know, get a better life, um, which is what happened to my ancestors. They moved here. She, she is our, our St. Patrick's Day unusual object. She's Irish. I'm one-fourth <laughs> Irish by way of the Bronx. Ooh, the Bronx. Mm -hmm. Nice. 
Yes, and you ever go to the Lower East Side Tenement Museum where they have an amazing collection oh, yeah, that's cool. and exhibits. Yeah. Um, my family, at one point, my great-grandmother and grandfather and all of their descendants, of which they had 11 children, so currently today there's over 100 descendants of just that branch. They actually lived in something very similar to the Lower East Side Tenement Museum, and um, so if you ever want to see that, which we did on a family reunion. I heard that was really cool. It's really yeah. cool, really cool. Some yeah. of the coolest objects they have, they actually excavated out behind the uh, in the backyard mm -hmm. in the privy. In the privy, because you know privies, toilets, trashes. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where you get the best stuff. Yeah. If you're an archaeologist, you look for the trash. And the poop. Not always the poop. Yeah. Um, we can tell a lot from the poop. You can tell diet. Okay. Health. Please. <laughs> this is about St. Patty's Day, though. St. Patrick himself, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. St. Patrick, who was in fact not a canonized saint, but a patron saint of Ireland. Um, a really cool guy. Yes, I grew up knowing that there was a day named after him, mm -hmm. St. Patty's Day, mm -hmm. and that he is the man who drove all of the snakes out of Ireland, which is extremely important mm -hmm. for me because I hate snakes. Interestingly enough, this is a myth. I know, and I realized that when I got a little bit older, that it actually has something to do with climate and... Climate? Well, yeah. <laughs> Does it have something to do with... Not climate, but like it has something to do with... Um, Snakes hate the weather in the, Ireland, yeah, and so they stay away it, from it, Ireland. There were no snakes in Ireland. Yeah, at one at point it was time. connected to the land body that is now England, mm -hmm. things like that, and they just weren't there. It's too cold. Um, actually, I think, pretty sure, unless this is a myth too, who knows? No. Pretty sure this is true. Um, we probably should find out. No, it's true. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we are the authority on St. Patrick's Day, clearly. Trust us. <laughs> no, but um, uh, the snakes, the eradicating the snakes from Ireland was um, basically a metaphor for St. Patrick coming in and eradicating the pagan beliefs um, and the triumph of Christianity in Ireland. Mm -hmm. So, because at the time when he when he was alive, which was back in the fifth century, um, it, Ireland was mostly pagan, right? Druid and pagan, and um, and he was responsible for Christianity's triumph there. And so the snakes were. Uh, a metaphor for leaving the paganism, leaving the country, and uh, so if you're not Christian, yeah, then maybe he's not such a great guy. If you think about it, <laughs> or if you like snakes, I don't. Know. Or if you like snakes, yes. But um, to be honest, like I think at some point it was somewhat of a pseudo religious holiday, but it's definitely mm -hmm. not. What St. Patrick's now. Day? Yeah, it doesn't yeah. have those. Those Christian connotations now. Well, in well, I don't know. Well, in, in Ireland, Ireland, it does. Ireland, it still does. It's still surrounding um, his the, death, the Saint Patrick figure. Yeah. But outside of that, it's not a. Real, it's more the culture of Ireland and not right. the religious aspect of that. Yeah, absolutely. The fun culture of Ireland and all of its leprechaun-y ways. Do, 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 do. Okay, sorry. I got a leprechaun in my head. I have to do that occasionally. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, St. Patrick's Day commemorates the anniversary of his death and, um, and all of the amazing things, the celebration of his life and all of the things that he did for Christianity. Uh, and, what you know, one thing that I thought was really cool that I actually do know was the shamrock. Mm -hmm. One of the things, the way that he taught the pagans about Christianity and the Holy Trinity mm -hmm. was by using the shamrock, the leaves on the clover, because they were, they, the, um, the pagans at that time really loved the shamrock. They thought it was um, a symbolic of rebirth and all of these other wonderful things. And so he knew that they loved it so much that he could use this as a tool to inform them on the Holy Trinity. So it was really... That's really interesting. I mean, cool. it's it's another example yeah. of, you know, really looking at the history of the spread of Christianity mm -hmm. and how, um, you know, to really kind of 
the people who went forward, you know, the missionaries and so forth that went forward to really spread that, used things like shamrocks or pre-existing holidays, pre-existing items surrounding holidays mm-hmm. to really, um, you know, help connect with the local population there and then push it forward. So that's why if you ever look at something that's, you know, a certain aspects of a celebration in one place and then you go to a different place and they have the same celebration, it's always sometimes slightly different. Um, the features of Jesus might be slightly different. Mm-hmm. Um, what aspects get celebrated on the holidays are, certain, are you know, slightly different. And that's mm-hmm. I think it's really interesting if you look at the spread of, of Christianity from, from that standpoint. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Which is not all good, but I mean, we're we'll just going to look on the bright side of that. Well, it's good if you like green beer. Yeah. And uh, to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> and, and one of the things that uh, the people and the traditions of St. Patrick's Day, they, it, it, St. Patrick's Day always falls within the Lenten season, Christianity's Lenten season. And they would, people would lift the ban of the, of the food and the drink and the dancing during Lent so they could take part in the traditional, what's the traditional food in, that they had in, um, for St. Patrick's Day in Ireland? It was bacon and cabbage? Is that what it was? Um, uh, corned beef cabbage. Corned beef and cabbage. Corned beef cabbage. It's just corned beef cabbage. There, I mean, there's different things you can eat, but from what I always knew, at least in the United States, there's a lot of corned beef and cabbage yeah. that gets eaten. Um, I mean, you can always do things. There's other things you're going to have as well. Yeah. But anything green, like cocaine. What? Cocaine. What is that? Oh, it's like mashed potatoes. With Co- wait, cabbage. say that again. Cocaine. Coal cannon. Coal cannon. Yeah. It's from... It, Why didn't we make some of that right now? Is it green? Yes. <gasps> you have, well, there's green in it. I mean, you could probably put what green it? dye. But I always thought coal cannon was, it's like, basically like a mashed potatoes dish. And you put some um, like scallions in it and some cabbage and like straw together. Oh, that sounds good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably a little salt and pepper. Nice. Next time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, at least I'm not in my family. That's uh, some of the things that we would eat or be looking for. Irish soda bread, which is not green, but I'm. Probably Why is everything green? Is it because of the beautiful colors of Ireland's landscape? I always assumed, and I have no. This is just me growing up Irish. There's always like green, Ireland, green, Ireland. It was definitely because you go there and the landscape is just like this hyper green because the, the cloud cover and everything. And I, I did visit that, um, visit Ireland when I was younger. And that was something that I noticed was it was just this beautiful hyper green color because yeah, of the darker like, clouds and the sun coming through. Yeah. And I could totally see why everything would be green. It's, the, it's also known as the Emerald Isle. That's um, true. Is a nickname. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, I think that the shamrock is definitely super important. Shamrocks are green. So I think it just kind of, I think it got labeled green. Yeah, I think. Or, the, um, or associated with green as a country and a culture very early on. Very early on. And the, um, during the Irish Rebellion in 1798, mm-hmm. the Irish, the Irish, well, I can't talk. The Irish. She said too much beer. Too, I have two sips of beer and I can't even say Ireland anymore. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, the Irish soldiers wore green when they were fighting against the British soldiers who were wearing red, which is, you know, and I know we're kind of jumping around, but if you take a, a second to think about the leprechaun, the one dancing on my head, um, who has become a staple of St. Patrick's Day, the leprechaun originally wore red hmm. in the folklore. British soldiers wearing red during the Irish Rebellion, leprechauns wearing red originally, now they're wearing green, and I've, you know, all the research I've seen on leprechauns is they wear green because it's easier for them to blend in with the grasses and the clovers and the landscape, you know, of Ireland, which is, makes total sense. If they're wearing red, they stand out like the gnomes. Sure. Gnomes. A cousin. Mm -hmm. Must be a, a cousin of a leprechaun. They're distant cousins. Yeah. Oh, green. More green More green fun facts. The Chicago River. One of my oh, favorite yeah. things. I love, do you want to, do you want to tell them about the Chicago River? Well, again, it goes back to the, you know, Irish immigrants and wanting to remember and celebrate their Irish heritage and keep it alive in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, many times when immigrant groups come over, 
wherever they go, you know, they tend to, you know, at least for a while stay together. And um, there is um, several little pockets, um, definitely around the East Coast, and one of them is in Chicago. And mm-hmm. they would, why do they start dying in green? Because they the, dyed the river the, green. The sewer, the sewer workers. The, there were, and they might have been Irish. I'm not exactly sure, or it, it, they just liked St. Patrick's Day. I don't know. But back in 1962, um, those 60s. Yeah, those crazy 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. I tell you, those were the days. They were. We digress. We don't. We weren't even born. But um, anyway, um, these these sewer worker guys who worked for the city were. Um, trying to figure out where the illegal dumping of sewage was coming from. And so they poured 100 pounds of green vegetable dye, is that what it was? Something like that. Into the Chicago River just to see, into different places that emptied into the Chicago River, I think, to see where the spills were. And when they saw the color, they were like, oh, my God, that's the best color ever for St. Patrick's Day. I can't Mm -hmm. believe it just turned green like that. And it stayed for like a week or two. I mean, it was a long time it stayed green. And so they started using it for St. Patrick's Day celebrations until, um, well, not until, they still do it, but they they um, don't use 100 pounds of veg- green vegetable dye anymore because the environmentalists were thinking that it was damaging the environment. So Probably now, like the yeah. different. they only use 40 pounds now. Oh. So it doesn't last a week, I think, anymore. It only lasts a few days. I mean, it's probably for the best. Yeah. I mean, St. Patty's really cool. Day. Really cool. Yeah. I mean, if you go online and look at some of those pictures, I mean, it is green, and you're like, what? It's just green. Crazy. Yeah. If you ever really want to be a part of St. Patty's Day, there's a lot of really awesome, a lot, especially in a lot of larger cities, mm-hmm. there's always like a parade, and um, definitely check out some of the local pubs. You can find an Irish pub anywhere around you. Hopefully, they'll have like some traditional Irish music. What, when was the where was the first parade? The first St. Patrick's Day parade. I know the first St. Patrick's Day parade was um, somewhere on the East Coast. I thought Boston. it's not Chicago. It must have been Boston. Boston. It had to have been Boston. Philadelphia, something like that. Yeah. But, like, early. It was not... Well, yeah, the one in the United States was super, super early. They had yeah. done parades over in Ireland, but they were more religious. Mm-hmm. Um, but the first one in the United States, I feel like it was, like, 17... Yeah, 17... 17... Not 1741. It was later. Let that. me look at my notes. We have... We have, <laughs> we have 1737. I was close. I was, like, 1741. very close. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't spout dates. I should have just said 1740s and I would have been like, <laughs> sort of. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you know what? I So I actually wanted to do this traditional Irish beer drinking tradition with you. Oh. But I, I couldn't find any um, clovers. So one of the things they used to do is they used to pour, put a bunch of um, shamrocks into the beer for good luck, and then they would, everybody would drink the beer, like, all of it in one gulp, like, not one gulp, but I mean, like, all at once, mm. shamrocks and everything, and that was supposed to bring you good luck in, in situations. Okay. That's pretty cool. No, yeah. I don't know if I could do it, but I couldn't, I actually went out in my grass and tried to find some, but I couldn't find I any. I actually saw at, there's a local grocery store around here, and they were sell. actually, there's, I think there's probably going to be a couple of them, they were selling, um, Fresh bouquets of um, clover. clover, three leaf clover, oh, and man. they had and they even had some that were potted. They had some that were potted, and then there, I also saw the ones that were just like here's a bunch. It's pretty cool. I like that. I do too. Well, this was a really fun holiday edition of Muse Stories, and you know, before we forget, I don't move. My leprechaun does move. He is holding a shamrock too. Yeah. And he really wants to tell everybody that Muse Stories is uh, the <laughs> video blog and podcast arm of Muse Curatorial Consulting Group. And um, if you want to check out um, our videos and podcasts, that's where they're located is musecuratorial.com. Mm-hmm. And it also talks about us um, and our group as a company and some of the um, other projects that we do, um, our main business is actually uh, taking care of the objects that you love. Yeah. Um, so you can check that out and see some of the um, photos and um, blogs of some of the um, objects that we've had the 
amazing opportunity to, to care for. Yeah, so please check out our um, videos on YouTube. Subscribe there. New videos come out every Tuesday. New podcasts on SoundCloud every Tuesday. So please take a few, follow us on social media, like us on Facebook and all that good stuff. And we will cheers one more time to St. Patrick's St. Patrick's. I still can't say it. Oh my God. Happy St. <laughs> Patrick's Day to all of the Irish around the world. Um, may the next year bring you luck. And to all the nine non-Irish, this is your one day that you can be Irish. The dancing leprechaun <laughs> will dance out of here. Sing a song. <laughs> Sing an Irish song so he can dance out. Um, I only know like lullabies <laughs> and stuff. Hum something. Um, 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 there's a tear in your eye and I'm wondering why, for it never should be there at all. <laughs> um, something, something, smile. <laughs> Uh, for uh, when Irish eyes are smiling, oh, there we go. All the world is bright and for the gay. podcast listeners, when the leprechaun kind of is dancing on my head, are smiling, sure it steals your heart away. Yeah, that was that's, good. That's actually an American. There's all of the Irish songs I, like I know that. are actually American. Like it was written by like Bing Crosby. Perfect way to end it. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>